Hey, good morning. Uh, Jay Nicholas for the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. I'm going to tie. Uh, I'm, I love this little fly. It's tied. Uh, it's a composite loop steelhead freight train. You can call it any yarn thing you want to, but uh, let's get zoomed in here and uh, we'll show you approximately what it's going to look like. I dearly hope it's going to look like this. And uh, so let's get started. This is, this is, I've been working a lot with uh, composite loops lately. This is an Arex Nordic Salt NS115. And as you will find that uh, size two, the 110 has a little bit longer shank and it's absolutely a straight eye. This eye is very slightly downturned. Shank's a little bit shorter. Hooks are sticky sharp. I really like this. Of course I like it, otherwise I wouldn't be fishing it, right? So I got some, uh, I got no tail. Sorry, you can put on a tail if you want to. But uh, I've got a butt here that is um, Diamond Flat Braid or Lagerton Flat Braid. And this is kind of a shrimpy pink. You could use a Chartreuse. You could use a Cerise, a Fuchsia. There's any darn thing you want to. See these tweezers here? Loon tweezers. I learned about them at the Fly Tying Expo in Albany. A lot of tools come along. They're often refinements. This thing is a game changer because I'm going to slip this. I'm going to open them up. I put my finger down on my composite loop material. I slide that under. And look at that. Look at that. Now that is, uh, in my opinion, the best thing I've seen around. I'm going to prepare my, uh, I'm going to get some wax on my thread. I'm using a Danville's 10, uh, 210 uh, flat wax mono. I have a dubbing spinner here. O P S T dubbing spinner. If you have something else, that's yeah, perfectly fine. So I, I hold my loop open. I slide that in. I let the thread get tight. I'm not going to let go of that. Then I release the tweezer. There you have it. That is just so amazing. Um, I'm going to take, now I, this, this uh, loop might be a little bit too long for what I, it, it may give me, I may have to use less of the whole thing. I'm going to now spin it up. So that's, that's one, you know, that's a really important new tool. Here's another one. Got it right here. It's a little dubbing, dubbing teaser. And in theory, you put it on your finger, but I, I don't actually put it on my finger. I just hold it like this. And it's going to help me. Now, I think that this is superior to all the other brushes I was using, but that's just an opinion. It might not be any better than a toothbrush. You know, you've got to decide, but I really like it. Um, and what I'm trying to do here, I'm basically combing out this composite loop to where it's just a, a small central core. Instead of being really thick, it's just that fine central core and I've got all my fibers. And now I've got some Got some water in my little bead cup here. And I'm going to uh, try to make this, try to 
try to get most of these fibers coming off one side. So I, I have spent months watching YouTube and watching everybody who ties intruders and composite loops and steelhead flies and car flies and musky flies and it's really cool and there's so much to learn out there and it's it is interesting because in some respects you know we are learning from each other um, it's, it's hard to tell where some of the stuff really began so I'm going to use uh, my rotary function a little bit here and, and now, if, if this thing were to be nice, if, if this would stay on that side, i just use the rotary function, but it, it, it won't. And so I'm going to walk it forward. And at each step of the way, I'm going to turn the fibers toward the rear as much as I can, because I don't really want them facing straight forward. The fly fish is just fine like that, but it's, it's not what I most want to have. So I'm actually going to come up short, shorter than I thought I would. Ideally, you come up at exactly the right distance. So I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to deal with that. But in the meantime, let me show you what comes next. So why not just tie this fly with... Uh, <clears throat> Why not just use a schlappen feather? Well, because I've just tied them with schlappen feathers for years and I want to do something different. And I really like the bugginess of this. Um, and by the way, I'm combing this to get, uh, to get loose fibers out, to get trapped fibers untrapped. So when would I fish this fly? I'd fish this fly summer, spring, summer, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter. There, there's the right progression of seasons. This is a fly meant to be fished on a swing. It's going to show up really well.